She grew up in Los Angeles, where she was born. It follows that Meghan Markle's ability to rock the ideal California chic look is not surprising. The 42-year-old Duchess of Sussex chose to attend a glamorous charity polo tournament in Miami with her husband, Prince Harry, on Friday, and dressed in an opulent casual luxury outfit. At the Royal Salute Polo Challenge, Meghan, accompanied by her close friend Serena Williams, looked incredibly chic in a $812, £650, dress by California designer Heidi Merrick. The princess, who has previously worn the designer's creations, accessorized the billowing white sundress with a striking bow and a £2,650 Maison Valentino purse. Megan loves the one-stud white leather crossbody bag and has worn it numerous times. The Duchess added a pair of 565 pounds Aquazura Purist 105 nude Napa leather pumps to her outfit to make her appear taller. Megan accessorized her ensemble with a pair of 175-pound Heidi Merrick Santa Barbara sunglasses, which are named after the location where she and Harry reside with their two kids. Megan chose a 7,050-pound Cartier Love Yellow Gold Bracelet, a pair of vintage Chanel earrings, Princess Diana's Cartier Gold Tank Francaise watch, and her new favorite Ariel Gordon Diamond Hex Tennis Bracelet, which is rumored to have been a Valentine's Day gift from Harry, to add some glitz to the ensemble. The princess chose a subtle makeup look, with just a light coat of creamy foundation, black mascara, and eyebrow color to accentuate her inherent beauty. Pictures from the exciting polo match showed a happy, if a little weary looking, Harry jumping up and down with his teammates, cheering on his rivals before he stepped up to take his prize from his gorgeous wife. Harry, on the other hand, chose to wear slip-on tan shoes, a crisp blue shirt, and cream pants. He then changed into his team outfit and went to the field for the game. Then, with a group of cameramen following them, the couple was spotted walking out onto the field and chatting with Harry's colleagues while having their every move recorded. At approximately 4.30 p.m. local time, Harry and Meghan arrived at the stylish location, accompanied by a film crew that was documenting their every step. The cameras did not stop rolling as the Duke got ready to face the Argentine celebrity in a charity match, and they were escorted to the clubhouse by enthusiastic staff after getting out of their white SUV with Harry's friend Nacho, an Argentine polo player. A little while later, the stylish Duke made an appearance on a patio, where he was observed mingling with visitors and posing for group shots. He had the classic networking appearance, grinning for pictures and shaking hands. An onlooker remarked, he looked in his element. Serena, Megan's friend and former tennis pro, was spotted enjoying a glass of champagne while they socialized with their guests and friends while Harry headed to the field. At one point, Serena and Harry shared a tender hug while the prince kept an eye on things outside of the game. They had become close in the years since the Duke and Duchess started dating. Harry arrived, quickly put on his team suit, and rode out onto the field to face his close friend Nacho. In the three-way match, the two men would be captains of opposite teams. As he warmed up with his teammates on the field, Harry was spotted beaming from ear to ear and appeared overjoyed to be back in the saddle. Harry will be playing on the field this weekend, but he will also be serving as an executive TV producer, participating in filming for a forthcoming Netflix documentary about the glamorous world of professional polo. A five-year production deal, estimated to be worth $100 million, was signed by the pair in 2020, and Meghan is currently working on her own non-fiction series for the streaming behemoth. In an attempt to cross-promote her new business American Riviera Orchard, Meghan's initiative will center on lifestyle-centric subjects like cooking and gardening, while the Duke will explore the aesthetic and social realm of polo, a sport he has played since he was a young boy. Archwell said in a statement on Thursday night that the program will provide fans unparalleled entry into the realm of professional polo. The statement continues, the series will pull back the curtain on the grit and passion of the sport, capturing players and all it takes to compete at the highest level. The show is mostly known for its aesthetic and social environment. Filming is anticipated to occur at the U.S. Open Polo Championships, which are held in Wellington, Florida, 
over the weekend, in addition to Harry's match on Friday. Prince Harry has had a busy week, attending two separate panel discussions on opposite ends of the nation since Monday. He left on Wednesday for San Francisco to attend the Uplift Conference hosted by BetterUp, a life coaching company he works with as chief impact officer. At the $1,600 per ticket event, Harry had a conversation with Mindy Kaling, star of The Office. However, the Duke's appearance was not live-streamed, in contrast to many of the panel discussions and roundtables that occurred throughout the summit. Harry had been scheduled to speak at the Uplift Conference in the past, but his particular session was not on the official schedule. As a result, the only way to see him was to attend the expensive two-day summit. Experts speculated that the Duke and his PR advisors at Archwell may have worked together to manipulate photos and films from his public engagements, with Archwell or the event organizers editing any final product before it was made public. At a Miami panel discussion event on Thursday night, he made an equally low-key appearance, talking candidly about his love of Africa and honoring the work his late mother Princess Diana had done to support those impacted by HIV and AIDS. Africa is in my soul and in my heart, he declared. After going there for the first time when I was 12 or 13 years old, I felt compelled to give back to it because it had given me so much. I loved Africa so much because of its large open spaces, many cultures, groups of people, wildlife, and sheer freedom that we named our charity, Centibale, which means, forget me not, in the local language of Lesotho. Its main goal is to make sure that the younger generation is, in fact, not forgotten. He continued by paying tribute to his mother's efforts in Africa and describing how it influenced his own humanitarian activities there as well as his initial motivation for founding Centibale. My mother was very concerned about HIV and AIDS, but she was also very concerned about the younger generation, because their futures are being stolen, he said. Alongside Harry were Dr. Sophie Shandaka, chair of the charity, Hector Muhika, head of economic opportunity at Google.org, Sam Bakshandapur, CEO of Jose Andres Hotel Group, and Alex Lebec, founder and CEO of Lebec, an organization that aims to reimagine how global capital markets can be a force for good. Dr. Shandaka was also present at the Polo event, when she was spotted posing with Richard Miller, the CEO of the charity, Nacho, and Harry, who is an ambassador for Centibale. In order to assist vulnerable children in Lesotho, Botswana, and Malawi, particularly those impacted by extreme poverty and the HIV and AIDS crisis, Harry co-founded Centibale with Prince Ciso of Lesotho in 2006. The Duke frequently participates in charity polo matches that support Centibale initiatives, further cementing the charity's long-standing relationship with the game. As part of the Centibale Polo Cup, which made its first comeback to Singapore since 2017, the Duke flew to Singapore last year to play polo against Nacho. But Harry's passion for polo goes far beyond his volunteer work. Since he was young, the youngest son of King Charles has participated in the sport and has frequently competed in bouts with both his father and brother, Prince William. But despite a long-running and widely reported feud between Harry and the other royals, the Duke hasn't visited the field with his family in years.